you know, you started off as a lawyer, mm-hmm. as any good Jewish boy would, mm-hmm. and then that wasn't really for you, right? What what happened? I mean, that that was a good life. It was a comfortable life. I know you were working really hard, but you're probably working just as hard. Yeah, no, I I, I enjoyed it, uh-huh. and and as I look back today, I'm I'm thankful I had that background because mm-hmm. it. It taught me to think a lot more incisively. I think today I'm more appreciative of having practiced law than back then. But I practiced at a firm by the name of Dreyer and Traub. Mm -hmm. And that's actually where we represented the president at the time, Mm -hmm. Peter Calico, Integrated Resources, um, the File family, Arthur Cohen. So it was a who's who's list of of real estate entrepreneurs in the Uh city of New York. And you couldn't help if you were a young lawyer wanting to do what they did. To be on the other side of the table. You right? just, yeah, it was uh-huh. right in front of you. I mean, every day you were you were representing these swashbuckling guys uh-huh. who were entrepreneurial in their spirit, and you just they 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 felt like the rock stars to uh-huh. me. You know, so, and another another swashbuckling, maybe a different kind of uh, partner, but more swashbuckling, more out there. Is Howard Lorber. You've dealt mm-hmm. with him for a long time. Mm-hmm. He's worked on projects. I think you guys are doing the addition together, mm-hmm. uh, both here and in, in West Hollywood, as well as the Toy Center building that you guys did together. Yes. He's a partner on 111 Murray as well. Uh, what was that like? How did that happen? I, I believe there was a, a car sharing story involved in that. Well, so I was at Dreyer and Traub, mm-hmm. and I remember that Howard used to pull up to Dreyer and Traub uh, at 101 Park Avenue. Mm-hmm. He used to pull up in this cream colored drop top Rolls Royce uh-huh. and he had this mane of hair and I used to come out sometimes mm-hmm. and I'd be in my Mo Ginsburg suit with my <laughs> uh, button down you know my shirt that was frayed at the top uh-huh. and probably had blood stains right here you know uh-huh. it was frayed because I had maybe three of them and there would be Howard pulling up in that cream colored drop top Rolls Royce and I thought to myself wow oh what a life right <laughs> like who wouldn't want to like now, sure. I'm not the Rolls Royce person. Uh-huh. Never had one. It's mm-hmm. not my. It's not my. You know. It's not for me. But Howard looks great in it. Okay. And so, I remembered him in this car, and I left the. I left law, and now it's, I want to say, late nineties, ninety eight, ninety nine, and I'm driving down Fifth Avenue, mm-hmm. and it is this driving pouring rainstorm. Mm-hmm. And there's Howard outside of I want to say Cipriani, mm-hmm. trying to hail a cab, and the rain is. You know, he's getting sloshed by mm-hmm. the rain. And I recognized him immediately sure. because, remember, I had this image of Howard yeah. Lauber in the drop-top sure. cream-colored uh, uh, Rolls Royce. Uh-huh. And I pulled over and I said, Howard Lauber, would you like a ride? And he looked at me nonplussed, had no clue who it was. Sure. And I said, Steve Whitkoff, I used to represent you at Dryer and Trout. Uh-huh. I'll give you a lift. Uh-huh. I gave him a lift and we kept up contact. And that's how the friendship and the relationship started right there. <laughs>